Okay, so time to put in these windows. So to put the windows in, you must draft the window or place the window in the wall in the plan view. So I'm going to press F2 to get back to plan. Then I am going to double click the window icon in the toolbox. Now I've already got the niche window selected, but if you don't happen to find it when you first open the window default settings, then you should drop down here on this little arrow, go to find library parts, type in the word niche, and then press find. So what that does is obviously it finds all the windows that are labeled with the word niche, and then you can click it. And this window will now be placed when we next embed it in the wall. So if we're looking at the preview options, that's what it will look like in plan. Uh, if you show the symbol on, then in elevation, in uh, perspective, in 3D and so forth. Now, one thing that you should be careful of is when you are nominating the depth, the depth is the depth of the recess of the window. So if, for example, your window default setting is set at 150 as the depth, then what's going to happen is, even though it's not appearing to punch a hole right through the wall in the preview, because our, win our wall is only, I think, 150 thick, then it's going to punch a hole through the entire wall. And that's not what we want the niche window to look like. We want the niche window to look like the preview, which is just a, a recess and not a hole punched all the way through the wall. So I advise that because we've drawn the wall as 150, that you at least change the depth if, if in fact the depth that has defaulted when you first open the window default settings, if it has defaulted to 150. So I'm just gonna press okay without being too concerned about putting in any other parameters such as width or height of the windows because I'm going to change those dimensions to match to the photo in the elevation view. But what I do need to do first is I need to place my first window into the wall. And the, what I do is I will zoom into the wall. Then I'm going to click on the edge of, a wall, of the wall on the outer edge where the, when the Mercedes key comes up so I'm going to click once with my left mouse button, click. And then what happens is the eyepiece suddenly appears as the cursor graphic. The eyepiece is to indicate on which side of this wall is the outside. So it's important to always nominate with your second left click the orientation of the window and that is to click to the outside or where the outside should be. Whilst it's going to be very obvious with a recessed niche window like this, which is the outside and which is the inside, if you don't get into a habit of doing this all the time, you may get into a bit of trouble if you're going to do other types of windows such as a double hung sash window, for example, which has a, a very noticeable outside and inside orientation of the window. That is to say that the bottom sash of a double hung window should be accessible from the inside. You should be able to lift the bottom pane of that double hung sash window and um, move it up to open it. And to do that, you should be able to stand inside the building grab the bottom of that double hung um, pane or the, the pane that's at the bottom and lift it up. But if you haven't been careful to always nominate where is the outside, Archicad may well in fact put in the window the wrong way around. And then it will be very, very clear when you're looking at the 3D model that the window looks a bit funny because it's back to front. Okay, so always get into a habit of the second click Make sure to nominate with your second left click the outside of the window. 
Okay, so I'm going to press my left mouse button now here. And then I'm going to go into 3D and just have a look for the window. And there it is. Now the window, if you can remember what the side elevation picture looks like, the window is not square in that picture. The window is rectangular. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that section that we drew earlier and have a look at where the window is positioned and then consider how we're going to adjust the size of the window. Now, just going to point out something here with the wall that's being drawn. If you notice, there are all these lines going across the wall, which is in fact what's called a cover fill. Now the cover fill, when you draw either a wall or a slab or a roof, there is this option of nominating whether you have a cover fill. So uh, the cover fill is indicated here. So it's best at this stage to choose a type of wall, 3D wall material that doesn't have this, well, another word for it is vectorial hatching. Okay, so I'm just going to choose a generic wall or a generic, Let's just do a generic site material, okay? And then just press OK. Because at the moment, those vectorial hatches, which are those horizontal lines, not really indicative of what the wall looks like. Okay, so we've got this one window in. Now what I suggest that you do is, I know this image is not quite to scale, but it's the best that we've got at this time. So just move this picture into perhaps a rough idea of where it, of, of where it should go, okay? And just let me double check this. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so it's a bit skewed off, as in it's a bit off scale, but let's just bear with it because this is about completing the exercises and understanding the exercises. So the, what, you, what you can appreciate then is that we need to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight windows in here. Now I'm going to just move this to the ground. Oops, just escape. I'm going to just move this to where the ground, Ooh, sorry, just control Z select the image itself and then I'm just going to control D and move this to the ground. Okay, so let's move this window into position here. So I'm going to press select the window, press control D and then zoom in a bit and then move it to here. Now I want to make the window taller so I will click on the black dot and there's a little pet palette that comes up and I want to use that icon, which is stretch vertically. So I can stretch it all the way up to there. And then I can, I can click on the black dot again and I can, whilst I still have this, the stretch horizontally and I might move it back to say there. Okay. Now I want to uh, duplicate these windows so that I can position one here here, 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 here. Okay, so I will press. Now, this is an interesting way of con of dragging a copy. Now, we've discussed in class that drag a copy is Control Shift D. Okay, whereas just drag is Control D, but drag a copy is Control Shift D. I'll show you another way, which is if you just press have the window highlighted, as in selected, then press Control D and then move the window into where it should go. But before placing it at where it should go, press the control key again. And if you notice, my cursor now has a little plus mark uh, that's on the, just at the bottom of where the cursor is. That indicates that a copy of the original is going to be placed rather than just moving moving the original to here. Okay, so I'm gonna just press my left mouse button and then there's one there now and there's also one there. 
Now select both of these by sh shift clicking. So I've selected the first one, held down the shift key, and then use my left mouse button to select the second one. Now I can press control D again, then move the windows to over here. And just before I press my left mouse button again, I will press the control key and notice how the plus mark comes up. And then I will press my left mouse button to place this pair of windows. Okay. So now if I look in 3D, I have those windows. Okay. I press F2, sorry, F6 to go back to the last opened section, right? Now, what I need to do now is I'm going to control D and then press move and then press the control key again and place that window there. Then control D, move this window over here, press the control key again to place. And then I'm going to just quickly scale these by clicking on the black dot and using the stretch commands in the pet palette. Move this one over here, black dot, stretch over here and stretch. Okay. Now these two windows, I'm just going to take this copy. So control D and then move this one, press control again and then left mouse button. And then I'm going to press on my black dot and bring this down to this shape. Then control D again, begin to move the window. Then just before you place it, press control again and then click my left mouse button. Okay, so now I've got, if I press F3, I've got these windows. Now, because of the problem with the skewed picture, these windows don't quite look like they're in the right place in relation to the picture. So if we just go back to, so if you look at the windows here and then look at the picture, so I press F6 to get back to here. Well, actually it sort of looks right because the windows are quite close up to there. But I'll leave it up to you to try and move some of the windows in relation to perhaps some other photos that you have. And then for the time being, I'll press F6, then F3. I'll just leave these where they are. These, these windows here, this one, and say this one, they're probably, uh, and then this one and this one. So notice how I'm shift clicking. They're probably over, and I'm just going to use this one over here. They're probably over here, say. Okay, so what I did was clicked on the node and then the pet power come up, came up and I used this drag horizontally. Okay, now I'll leave that up to you. But this, that's the exercise for putting in the niche windows uh, based on the image that we see in F6. Okay, which F6 is just to open the last section. Now, there are obviously some other windows in there and I'll leave that up to you to move those windows into place based on the photos that you have. If you haven't had a chance to um, take any photos at site, then I uh, would suggest you should speak to your uh, classmates and pull your resources together so that everyone has copies of images of the site.